Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Guess who is back on my channel today? Back again. No, that didn't work. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Guess who is back on my channel today? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> all the angles. So today, Today. Cameron has decided to... I instantly started looking up again, I need to look down. <laughs> Cameron has decided to... Treat you all real good. With? Um, a video on my favourites. It's going to be a pretty poor video because I have a strange thing about reading books. When I read books I get super, super compulsive about reading them really, really quickly. Like I'll read them every second of the day that I have straight until it's finished. Which is brilliant, but then means I forget everything about them. Which is also brilliant because then I get to reread them having not known what happened, but does not make for great reviewing capacity. Yeah, so to be fair, when I filmed my favourite books of 2019 video, I went back to my recent reads videos mm, to yeah. look at my little wrap-ups of what you I said cheated, at the time, is what which helped to do my reviews for the end of the year. Shall we introduce you to anybody who's new, because there are new subscribers since you were here last. You're right, I'm Cameron. I read, don't read as much as her. But I like books. Who are you in relation to me? If we keep that under wraps, Jazz. Who are you? See, she wants me to say a specific word here. She's my fiance, and I am hers. Yay. I actually don't know if you showed them the ring yet. Can you see it? Yeah. I have one too. Because fuck the patriarchy. How was your 2019 in reading generally? I read more pages than Jazz. You didn't. And I read more books than Jazz. You didn't. But she doesn't like to believe it. Loads of comics at the end. But aside from it being a competition, uh, <laughs> how was your reading year? Yeah, no, good. I don't really read bad books ever. It's very rare that I'll read a book and be like, that was shite, because I only really take recommendations off people, like stuff that you've told me about, or mm. housemates, or friends, people that read stuff that I trust their opinions, which means that I that don't really read bad stuff all that often. So, 2019 was a good reading year. Read like, what, 40? I oh, know, did I get 50? 45 books? Mm. Something like that. Yeah. 45, 50 -ish books, like around there. She does my Goodreads. Um, I don't keep track of it. I like doing Goodreads. I think that you read more literary fiction this year than you ever have done before. I think basically all of your book yes. favourites are literary fiction, apart from mm. one. So goddamn brainy. Since I look at the camera, I end up looking at myself. Yo, don't. Just I mean, who can keep their eyes off that goddamn face? Shall we? Yes. So what order are you going to do this No one? particular order. No particular order? Nope. You. No particular order. I'll go easy. The fact that this is in no particular order, this still is the best, Jasmine. Okay. The best of the lot. This is my favourite. This is the one that has absolutely fired up into my favourite books of all time. Which is funny because big, big fan. you may have just watched my previous video, which was my favourite books of 2019, and this was my favourite book of 2019 as well. Uh, it's almost like there's a reason why we get along, Jas. This book is absolutely incredible. I love it a ridiculous amount. Read it inside like a day, so I think I literally read it inside a day. So I can't remember a whole lot of like the intricacies and detail about it, but um, I like it so much and I remember liking it so much that I get like genuinely palpably excited at the idea of rereading this book because I'll get to experience it again. It's a literary fiction novel. Yep. It focuses on two people, Connell and Marianne who grow up in a rural town in Ireland. They have very different backgrounds, and the book basically just follows them. I'm saying a lot of information here, Jasmine. Over a few years from when they're teenagers to when they're young adults. Cameron thinks everything's a spoiler, so. We will at some point treat you to the gem of a debate video about what constitutes a spoiler. A whole and video. It... He's very precious about it, just. So this book is really good. I like it a lot. It's a character study. It examines these two people's relationship. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, just focuses on that, like nothing else. Primarily, predominantly, no. exclusively. Anyway, it just focuses on the characters, um, the main two characters a lot. It's basically, all it's doing is following those two, it's homing in on that. It's not trying to paint a world for you, it's not trying to paint a picture of anything else. It's just these two people, this is them, this is their interaction, and it just goes with that. The writing is beautiful. How is it beautiful? Sparse. Beauty. Yeah, because I was going to say, I think saying it's got beautiful writing might be quite misleading because it isn't beautiful in a very Dishonor. descriptive or obvious way. Super sparse, yeah. It like leaves enough space for you to put yourself into the book and into mm. the characters and then you kind of connect with them more because of that lack of punctuation and all that kind of stuff helps with all of that as well. And you really end up feeling yourself within the book. Oh my! Oh yeah. Foot's numb. Foot numb thing has to go in there. Oh my foot's numb <laughs> has to go in. Other thing 
the dialogue is fabulous in it. So it switches perspectives from chapter to chapter and it does that in a really nice way so that you go into all the conversations they're having with more information than they have and it fits really well with that phrase that's like, you know, every time you're talking to somebody there's actually six people involved in the conversation. The person you think you are, the person they think they are, the person they think you are, the person I never heard that you before. think they are and then the two of you, like who you actually are. Yeah. And it really does that well, because they each have these conceptions of who the other person is and what they're trying to say, and they're mm. wrong. And then they don't even express themselves very well a lot of the time. And you're kind of seeing all six of those people converse badly and confusingly to the wrong ends. It's a really nice and I think accurate portrayal of dialogue and does that really, really well. Mm. Great book, you should totally read it. Done. Here's another thing to mention actually. Okay. I like a lot of these books a lot. As part of liking a lot of these books a lot, I will tell Jasmine, she should read these books. Hmm. She should enjoy partaking in these books. She has not read... You say that like it's one way. <laughs> almost all of these. This one, Milkman, by Anna Burns. Um, do you want to hold that up? Mm, gladly. She has been saying she would read what, for like two years now? No. And in the last no. in the last video that we filmed, you were like, I'm going to read it soon, I'm going to read it soon. I'm going to read it soon, I'm going to read it soon. Hmm. No, you won't. Still hasn't happened. To be fair, I know this is odd and I don't know why because I don't think I'm a very obstinate person in this way, but now that the hype has died down about it, I genuinely am more interested still... in reading it. I don't know why. Yeah. I genuinely feel like I'm going to read this in the first half of this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. Cut to the third video where she's still saying that. <laughs> this is the one that she needs to read the most. But which, we'll get to that. Which... Uh, Milkman's great. Bye. It's by Anna Burns. This is also literary fiction. I actually don't yeah. really know what it's about because I haven't read it. Also, it was surprisingly popular last year for the little I heard about the actual plot. Yeah. It's set in Ireland, right? Experimental writing, Ireland. Experimental writing. Like so this one is like super difficult to read. And the first half of this, I really struggled to read it. And it was like work. But I don't know if it gets easier in the second half or just after a while of reading it, you just get more used to it. But by the end, I was super used to it and it was totally fine and I read it and it was great. Well, so it's like stream of consciousness -y. Yeah, stream of consciousness and it's um, depersonalised, so there's no names. And it's just, it's strange and it's philosophical um, and it's hmm. like almost whimsical. There is a lot of philosophical stuff in there and that's really great. That's kind of my jam, so I really enjoyed that bit of it. It does something similar to one of the other books on this list, actually, that I really, really like. It examines the other side of a conflict. I have read a lot of books that focus on conflict, like physical, violent conflict, like that was happening in the, the times of the Troubles where this seems to be set. But this focuses on the other side, it focuses on how that conflict affects the communities, not the, the fighters. Here you're looking at all the women and the non-combatants and you're kind of really focusing on them and how they're being impacted by this conflict that's going on right on their doorstep mm. and how it creates this sense of other and then you've got this division, especially when it's an internal kind of civil conflict, how that community has to deal with that and how the people have to navigate that and all that kind of lovely stuff and it just does that in a really nice way with a nice philosophical bent to it and that's kind of up my street. I really enjoyed that. You're managing to make me want to read this book less. You're saying it's about conflict so I'm like... Yeah, well it's, yeah, it's it examines like that through the lens of character yeah. study though. I mean I believe you if you say I'd like it. You'd like it. It's all about characters and character analysis yeah. and stuff like that. Next. Next. Saltwater by Jessica Andrews. This one's great. I didn't like it that much when I was reading it because it's kind of poetry prose and I struggle with that, not really mm. reading poetry. I want to like it, but I find it very hard, very confusing, very difficult. This kind of had a similar element in that you don't necessarily, or I didn't necessarily understand a lot of it until after. It's not like clear, you're not reading a sentence and you're like, oh yeah, I know what that said. It's more about generating feelings and capturing feelings in the book and then creating them in people um, than it is actually kind of just like normal writing, telling you a story in a similar way to I feel poetry can be. Got to the end of it and I was like, you know what, that was brilliant. That really created an emotion and captured a sense of a feeling and a time for me. Mm. So this one kind of is all about um, youth and developing a sense of oneself and struggling to find a sense of oneself and getting through all of that confusion and hectic lack of personhood that I think a lot of people feel when mm. they're in their early 20s. Yeah, so it's all about the youth and like not knowing who you are and not even knowing who you want to be, where you want to be and like just all of that confusion and the fact that it changes daily, um, I think especially in the modern era. You know, one second you're like, I really want to get out of the city and go back to... Well, you are. Well, for me, <laughs> rural Norway. I want to move to rural Norway, just do all of that. And then the other time I'm like, no, I want to move to London and like experience all of this and this culture and this weird phenomena. We're constantly being bombarded by all of these people and these other things telling you how you should live and what the best life is and all that kind of stuff. I think it touches upon that like paradox of choice where you've got too many choices. 
Like our generation is, is incredibly fortunate in that we've been told we can do anything. But also like yeah. it's it's too much choice. It can I mean, you know confuse and, and leave people kind of paralyzed by it and unsure of where to go or what to do. I feel like that's kind of what's going on in this and it's mm, working through that. It just captures a sense of that youth and going through all that stuff. This one intrigues mm. me more than Milkman. This one you're either gonna love it or hate it, I think. Mm. Not, and not, that's not Jasmine. Anyone that reads it will either like love this book or hate it. It is, I think, super specific and I mm. think amazing, but I can see why somebody would really not get along with it. Put this in. Ooh. Trousers are coming off. Are you warm? Yeah. <laughs> Next book. Next book, we don't have a copy of. Actually. Dun, dun, dun. What is it? It's Red Rising. Red Rising is actually the, the trilogy. I haven't read the fourth and I believe the fifth one they're out. I'm too scared to. You say it was if, a trilogy? Yeah, so it's a trilogy and then he brought out another ones afterwards. It's like a second trilogy ah. afterwards, based on the events afterwards. Mm. If anybody has read those, let me know if they're good. Because I'm too scared to read them because I like how the trilogy finished. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I get obsessive about like burning through books. Burn through these books more than I burn through anything else. Can remember very little about these. That was an obsessive yeah. week. It's YA fantasy, right? YA fantasy, except and it's not really that YA. It's more just, it's sci-fi. It's not fantasy. It's oh, neither sorry. of those things. You ruined my question. This is very different from most of the books that I like in that it is not a character study. It does not have, I think, like it, it's writing's fine, but it's not very good. It's entirely like plot focused. It's like conflict driven, just burning through. And you fall in love with the characters. Like I like the characters a lot, but it's not, there's not a like, huge lot of development and there's not, that's not what you're reading for. It's interesting. Cause I don't think I've actually heard that much about Red Rising on booktube. Everyone that I've talked to that's read it, like absolutely adores it. Mm. It's a great book. If you try and pick it up after this, stick through the first hundred pages. First hundred pages, you're like, ah, eh, whatever. Totally see the way this is going. It's cliched. I'm, I can see the entire layout of this going onwards and you're wrong. You're wrong, it changes, it's different, mm. and it's brilliant. That's good, because you can usually guess. I don't want to be, I don't want to be too arrogant, I don't want to blow my own horn too much, but I am ridiculously good at guessing what's going to happen <laughs> next in books. You actually are, to be fair. Um, and with this, I just didn't, um, I, I mean, I guess things all the time, but I was wrong way more than I was right, and that is like a genuine rarity. You don't know where it's going to go, you don't know the twists and the turns that he's taking you on and it really, really keeps you going and keeps you engaged. Did you say who it was by? Uh, no, mostly because I don't know who it's by. Mm. She will put some text on screen now saying who it's by. I feel like it's Pierce something. Pierce Brown? Yeah. I think it's Pierce Brown. Why are we running out of charge, right? Shit. We're back after a brief interlude. Yeah. Camera died. It's good, we're back. We made it through. It's fine, the next book, penultimate book. Penultimate book, and to be honest, the last book. I'm going to talk about another book, but it doesn't really deserve to be on this list. Ah, oh, it's an honourable mention. It's an honourable mention at okay. best, yeah. Uh, Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Fabulous book. Really, really like this one. Read this in January last year. Mm, so early. I remember not a huge amount about this one. Yeah, <laughs> like, you loved this when you read it. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you, you, Cameron has an interest in... Uh... What, historical kind of conflicts and stuff like that? Yeah, no, but also just the original story. Oh yeah, okay, so I absolutely love the Iliad trying to read the actual text. It's a slog. I love that. I love kind of ancient Greek myths and ancient Greece in general. But I also love like just historical conflict, especially like anything really ancient kind of conflict and stuff like that. I love reading about it. And I read loads and loads of books about it when I was a kid, like about all the Roman invasions and all that kind of stuff. And this, I think, really resonated with me because it showed a different side to all of those conflicts. So when I was reading this, it was kind of like I was rereading all of those other books, but seeing the underside of that as well. So this focuses in not as much as it's um what's it called advertising marketed. marketed as yeah so this is marketed as the iliad but from the female perspective yeah which is not what happens it's just a retelling of the iliad it is from the female perspective somewhat and i read this as well i really enjoyed it i did enjoy the female perspective but yes it does switch away from the female perspective which annoyed me and yeah marketed. didn't bother me though because i have testicles i just think it would have been a stronger book if it had just stuck to the female yeah i, I, I don't see think what it... you're saying you don't want to hear from achilles i don't want to hear you from know achilles. like i want I, I want that female thing but i also want to see the original text mm. anyway 
Point being, it shows a lot of the female side of conflict and talks about all that kind of stuff that women had to endure during those times and the kind of lives they had to live and that was really, really good. It was a favourite of yours largely because of the interest you already had in it and kind of what it was doing for you. Because I didn't have yeah. as much of a background knowledge and I didn't have as much of an interest in it and I read it and I thought it was a good book, right, but it's yeah. not a brilliant okay. book. If you didn't care about the Iliad at all, you probably wouldn't think it's it was a brilliant good. book. But if you like the Iliad, it's a brilliant spin on the Iliad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll give you that. Yeah, um, writing's not very similar to her other stuff. That's why I was shocked, right? Yeah. So Pat Barker is a brilliant writer. She wrote the Regeneration Trilogy and she's mm. been writing for like Long time. decades. And yeah. she's great. And I read this and I, I expected her writing to be stronger. Yeah. Anyway, I really liked it. I thought it was amazing. Really loved it. Um, if you have interest in any of that kind of stuff, I'd recommend giving it a read. I, I enjoyed it. Honourable mentions. Closing in on the end, home straight. These two. Um, so, Magic Ship by Robin Hobb, it's the trilogy. And then um, Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. And it's like seven books. Nah, they're going straight down. They are both great. Pretty much most of the fantasy I read this year, I think. Very good for different reasons. So, the Robin Hobb ones, super good different take on fantasy. I liked them a lot more at the time, but they haven't really stuck with me in the same way. So the Magic Ship does a lot more character building stuff than typical fantasy does. So it's not as heavy into the world building, and it's not really the plot, at least from plot even, that like drove me forwards, unlike other fantasy series. It was more about the characters, and the characters really went through changes in the three books and they really really developed and you got to see them kind of grow and react to the circumstances in a way that circumstances don't normally affect characters in fantasy mm -hmm. normally like something terrible happens and everybody's like i'm the exact same person as i was five minutes ago it's like you're the entire city got destroyed, mate. Like, I people changed and people didn't um, feel the same way as their families that they hadn't seen in five years. Which happens all the time in fantasy. Like, people go away and they come back and they're like, oh my god, we get along so well. How would that? Anyway, it does all of that and that's really, really nice. But it didn't stick with me in the same way. Great book, really, really loved it. And then... We're scared about the camera down. The Furies of Calderon. The Furies of Calderon series, kind of the opposite. The characters don't really develop, they don't really change. It has a lot of the issues that most fantasy has in it, but... You can tell that he planned the entire series ahead of time. Unlike a lot mm. of fantasy, I think when you read, you read the book one and you're like, that's amazing. And then you read the next four and you're like, well, you really should have thought that through to begin with. This one, I think Furies of Calderon is the worst book, but it like gets better and better. And you can tell he thought the whole thing through, planned it all out and then did it. And it's just good. Very, very, very solid book. I'm done. I totally have more books that I've really liked this year. Though. I just thought of Mythos. I really like Mythos. Oh yeah, so there's two, two, two things left. That I have to do. Number one, to reveal a secret. Okay. Definitely did it in one of them where I, I, I do like a little expose segment on Jasmine's life. It's not going to be anything too bad, don't worry. I'm not going to tell them that you like bite your toenails with your teeth to come. She doesn't use nail clippers, she just, she just gets them right up. Don't. Can't give her for that. <laughs> but it's not that, that's not the expose. The expose is that you are lying. You are lying to your friends on Bookshoot. You know that you're doing it. I don't know. And oh. I know, I know it's a sensitive subject, sensitive subject for women. I know that the patriarchy has made you very sensitive about telling people your real age. But our little, our little Jasmine is no longer as young as she once was. I am now 24. She's 24 and she hasn't updated it. I'm happy to be 24. Yeah, good age. And then the other thing, gonna branch out, gonna push some boundaries here, Jazz. I'm not, not calling the channel one dimensional, but you know, you're focusing on books a lot. Mm, it's a booktube channel. Yeah, it is book related before you all click off. It's about the Little Women film, which is incredible. Yay! Oh, that's nice. So good. You definitely read the book before you watch the film, because I think without it would be like, a, you know, sort of four out of five, but if you've read the book and then you watch the film, Hands down, five out of five. One yeah. of my favourite films I've ever seen. Probably the best or second best to Lord of the Rings adaptation of a book to film mm. ever. It's amazing. You should totally go and watch that. I've actually seen it twice. I saw it with yeah. my mum and then I saw it with Cam and I knew Cam That's was like obsession. it. Cameron had already read the book and enjoyed the book. Liked the book a lot, yeah. It was so good. They got the characters. I read somewhere that it felt like they were in conversation with the source material. Cameron sobbed <laughs> yeah. all the way through. <laughs> I was like seeping, like I was just leaking. It started very time. early on. Oh, straight away, you know, like the chest, the chest was going. Good film. Would recommend, book yeah. and film. Outro time. Okay, outro time. So that's it then. That's it for another appearance from myself. Those were Cameron's favourite books that he read in 2019. As always, we would love to know your thoughts on the books, if you read any of them or if you want to read them. Cameron yeah. will be reading the Let comments. me know, see what you think. Be interested. Done! Thanks Bye. for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye. I was scared. I thought you were gonna jump on me. Putting in the contract.
<laughs> <laughs> she's bringing me on here to make her look great, but she's actually set the cards in her favour. I mean, why else am I here? Popular demand? I don't think they were clamouring for it. <laughs> I can't put anything in if you swear! <laughs> Definitely already said that. You don't have to edit that out. Do sit up a bit. You're, you're a bit of a slouch, aren't you? A bit of a slouch, yeah. Because I'm shy. You're not shy. I'm not shy. <laughs> I've been there the whole time. That's not good. Put that in! Put that in, it's funny. What am I trying to say? I don't know. What are you trying to say? No. Really Stop saying <laughs> sure! You're saying things and I'm just like... Ow! A spare piece by this point. I don't know what I should say. Go again. I'm sure I did a much better job than I'm going to here. Mm. But yeah, it's disgusting. I didn't want to say it. You just chat shit and I cut so <laughs> much of it out. 